All right, guys, we're looking at section 6.6. .6. This is on page 181 in your student journal. What we're going to be looking at is how do we solve exponential equations? The ones we had in warm-ups were pretty easy equations, um, but what you should have noticed were the three different types we looked at. So if you have an exponential expression on both sides of the equation and you can get like bases, you want to do so. Because then all you have to do is set the exponential parts e equal to one another and solve. However, if there is only one exponential expression in the equation, you may need to solve by rewriting it in logarithmic form. That's like number four in the warm-ups. Like if I gave you three to the x equals 27 to the one-half, you could get like bases and solve it because we can rewrite that with a base of three. However, if I gave you three to the x equals 25, that one we cannot get like bases, so therefore we would have to use logarithms. We'd have to do log base 3 of 25 equals x. So that's the difference. Get like bases if you can. If you can't, then rewrite as a log. For logarithmic equations, if you have um, a log on both sides of the equations with the same bases, then you can simply solve it. That's like number two in our warm-ups. We had like bases with our logs, so therefore we could just set those equal to one another. If there is more than one log on a side, then you have to condense. All right? So if you had two logs on one side, you have to condense it. If there is a log on only one side, we can solve by converting into an exponential equation. So the log equations are probably going to be a little bit more complicated. All right, let's take a look at number one here. First, you have to ask yourself, can you get like bases? And we can, so I want you to go ahead and try solving that on your own. to get that. All right, just a reminder that you can also solve these on your calculator. Just kind of watch if I have 125 raised to the x minus 1 and I have 25 squared. Um, it would be kind of tough for me to see that 25 squared to see where these are going to be equal to each other. I'm going to have to make my window go really high to see that 25 squared. In fact, I'll just make this 25 squared plus 1, just to make sure I can see it. Now when I graph, here's my first one, here comes my second one, and I just do my second trace calculate. I want that point of intersection. Um, I want to get over there kind of close to it. Whoops, too far. Enter, 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 and it tells me that it's 2.3 repeating, and that's the same as 7 thirds. Okay? All right, looking at um, logarithms now. For this one, if we have an equation like this where we have log base 3 of x equals log base 3 of 4x minus 5, we check it. The logs are the same with the same base. So therefore, we can just do x equals 4x minus 5. Go ahead and solve that. Everybody get five-thirds? Okay. Now you should also check it and see if it makes sense. See, when we have a logarithm, whatever is in this spot must be greater than zero. So for this equation, my x value I come up with must be greater than zero. And 4x minus 5 must be greater than zero. I'm talking about the domain of these, each of these. So when I solve this, 4x must be greater than 5, so x must be greater than 5 fourths. So I have to check my answer. Is that answer I came up with greater than 0 and greater than 5 fourths? Is it? Yeah, it is. 
So therefore, it should be okay. I could also plug it in and make sure it works. I could check it on my calculator, but that is the solution. All right, let's take a look at some extra practice problems. Check out number one. We're not going to actually do it, but what, how would we do it? Zach, if we were going to do it, how would we do it? 2x plus 4 equals 5x minus Yeah. All right, number two. How would we do number two? Karen, what would we're we do? About the basis of two. Okay, so what would this one be then? Uh, two to the 4x minus 2. Good. And then that'd be 2 to the 3x plus 6. Good. Make sure you distribute that exponent through like he did. We're not going to solve it completely, but that would be the correct way to do it. So if we can get like bases, we do. But what about on number three? Can I get like bases? So what do I have to do? Use a logarithm. Use a logarithm. So we know if we have b to the a equals c, that is going to be equivalent to log base b of c equals a. That's another way of writing that exponential is like that. So we're going to have log base 3 of 5 equals x plus 3. Finishing it, log base 3 of 5 minus 3 equals x. Is this mean, can I just put 2 there? Log base 3 of 2? No, we can't. It's log base 3 of 5, then minus 3. So that's the exact answer. <clears throat> if I want the approximate answer, I can go to math, go up to log base. 3 of 5, go outside of the parentheses and then do the minus 3. And there's our approximate answer. We're going to go out three places after the decimal. So it's approximately negative 1.535. Okay? So we can get both exact and approximate. Questions? All right, number four. Always check, can you get like bases? Can we? Yes, we can. So we're going to. So I'm going to rewrite this as 5 to the negative 3x plus 2. You see what I did? It was 5 to the negative 1, and I had to distribute the negative 1 through there. For this one, I'm going to have to think of this as 5 squared to the x. And then we're also taking the one-half power. So what is that just going to turn into then? Just what? 5 to the x. And then we just set our exponents equal. We're not going to finish that. All right, let's take a look at number 5 now. When we're doing these problems, if we cannot get like bases, we have to get the, the e and the x as isolated as possible. So I have to get rid of the 12. I have to divide both sides by 12. When I do that, I get e to the 1 minus x. Dividing both of these by 4, I'd get 125 over 3. Look, this is b to the a equals c. b to the a equals c. All right, so I have to rewrite it like this. Log, find the base. Go to the next value, equals 1 minus x. So now I have to solve this for x. So I would subtract 1. Now, what's another name for log base e, though? So I'm just going to write that as the natural log of 125 over 3 minus 1 equals negative x. So then I would just multiply everything through by negative 1 or divide by negative 1, however you want to think of that. And there would be our exact solution. All right. You guys try number six now. You want to get that E as isolated as you can.
So you can see I'm just checking our answer, just reminding you how you can check it. So I put in the left side of our equation and the right side of our equation, and I'm going to find that point of intersection. And I should get 2.120. And I'm going to check this now, make sure it's the same. 2.120, OK? So this is exact. That's why we use equals. And then the approximate answer, when we use these kind of squiggle things, would be that. All right, let's do some logs. With logarithms, we do occasionally get extraneous solutions. Extraneous means extra, things that don't work. We want to look at it. Do we have logs on both sides? No. So what are we going to have to do instead? Rewrite as what? Exponential. Find your base, swirl it around. So it's going to be 3 squared equals 4x. 9 is 4x. X is 9 fourths. Okay, on this one, we check. We have like bases. So now it is just a single log on each side. So I can do x squared plus 3 equals 4. x squared is 1. x equals plus or minus the square root of 1, which is 1. Now, I've got to check. Is that going to work? Well, if I plug in negative 1, that's the one we're worried about. Negative 1 squared is 1 plus 3 is 4. Does that work? Yeah, it's okay. Most of the time we don't want to have negatives in that spot, but because that negative is going to get squared, it's going to be okay. So that's our answer. Anybody know how we would do this one? We just have a log on one side, so what do we have to do? Justin? Right. And now we have to finish this. So we have to think, what is 8 to the 2 thirds? Well, that's going to be the cube root of 8 and then squared. What is that? 4. So we're going to have 4 equals x squared minus 5. So bringing that over, x squared equals 9. Take the square root of both sides. We get plus or minus 3. And now check. Is it OK to have a negative 3 there? If we square negative 3, what do we get? And what's 9 minus 5? Is 8 to the 2 thirds 4? Yeah, it is. Cube root of 8 is 2, squared is 4, so that works. Both of those values work. Just checking for the extraneous. All right, guys, what did we say we have to do when we have two logs on one side? Look back at your notes. What did we say when we have two logs on one side? Condense. We have to condense. So we have two logs here, so I have to condense. What does addition of two logs turn into? Multiplication. So I'm going to have to do x times x plus 2. So now I'm to the point where I just have a log on both sides. So now these values must be equal. So I've got x squared plus 2x must equal x plus 6. This is a quadratic, so I have to get it set equal to 0. I'm going to have to subtract this and subtract this. So when I subtract that and subtract this, so now I have x squared plus x minus 6 equals 0. I have to factor, put my x and my x. What are numbers that multiply to be 6 and subtract to be 1? Karen? Two and three. Yep, 2 and 3. This would be plus, this would be minus. So my solutions are negative 3 and 2. But I now have to check those. On this one, what would x have to be greater than? 0. On this one, what would x have to be greater than? Negative 2. On this one, x must be greater than what? OK, so we've got to make sure that negative 3 meets these requirements, does it? 
No, so it is not a solution. Does two meet all those requirements? Yes, and I should check it. Like, it's natural log base two. See, watch, I can now plug it in and see if it works. I could do natural log two plus natural log of four, get that answer, and see, is that the same as the natural log of two plus six, which is eight? And yes, they are the same, so therefore it works. All right, let's start by talking about x's on this one. What do we know about x? x must be greater than negative five, and x must be greater than two. So I really can get rid of this one. I just have to make sure x is greater than two. Just like over here, I could have just gotten rid of those and just said x must be greater than zero. That's the one that takes care of the most values in our domain. We have to be the most restrictive. All right, so now what do we have to do with these two logs? Make them into one log. What does subtraction turn into with these two values? Division. So we would have division. So now we just have a log and we know that if we have log base b of a equals c, that's equivalent to b to the c equals a. So b to the c must equal a. 2 to the third is 8. To solve this, I have to multiply both sides by x minus 2. I can also think of it as cross multiplying. Whenever you have an equation, you can cross multiply, or you can think of it as I have to multiply both sides by x minus 2. So 8 times x minus 2 is 8x minus 16 equals x plus 5. That's going to give me, subtract this over, 7x, take this over, that's 21, x equals 3. I should see if that's going to work. 3 plus 5 is 8. 2 to the third is 8, so that answer would be 3. 3 minus 2 is 1. 2 to the 0 is going to be 1. And then 3 minus 0 is 3, so that does check out that's going to work. And it meets our restriction that it has to be greater than 2. What questions do you have? Okay, very good. We've got our assignment. It's on Big Ideas 6.6 .6 Part 1.